one, two, four, twice lined up in rows. Let's go! Reviewing each one with the passion is showing it's so Blasted to metal, he knows them so well. How about Stormtrooper Swagger, his story to tell. Now, tune in for Birdies, the toy expert. Let's go! From action to our game. Hello and welcome, I'm Bert the Stormtrooper, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Star Trek First Contact USS Enterprise NCC-1701E from Playmates Toy, and I'm really excited about this one. I just found this today, and it is still brand new in the box. It has never been opened, so I'm really excited about this one. I can't wait to open it, and we can check this one out together. This was originally released in 1996 and retailed for approximately $30. How do I know that? Because the original price tag is still on there from Toys R Us. Originally retailed for $26.99. So very excited about it. And uh, yeah, this is the one. So this was the first uh, toy of the Enterprise E that we got. The one for first contact. And this one got... A little bit of criticism because it is not exactly screen accurate when playmates received the design for the toy they received some early sketches from what was going to be used in the movie where the impulse edges were placed here in the center back side of the dish right there and later those were changed uh, right before the movie where the this was actually the uh, shuttle bay and the impulse engines are supposed to be here on the side. Also, the Bussard collectors are completely exposed. What we saw in the movie, these are actually covered. It's got like this, they're all covered and then they got like a little window on each side. So this one fell under a little bit of criticism because of that. But nevertheless, I'm really excited about it because this is my first Enterprise E. I can't wait to open this up. So here's the box. You know, you can see uh, you, we got a Borg right here because the Borg are back. Try me. Press here to activate sounds. And we got three buttons here. And when we press them, nothing is happening. I didn't expect anything to be happening. It uses three AAA batteries. And so, yeah, this thing, as I'm recording this, it is November of 2024. This came out in 1996. So those batteries have been in there for about 28 years. So here's hoping, fingers crossed, that when we open this, we don't have a whole bunch of corrosion and damaged circuits. Hopefully a little bit of cleaning and new batteries will get this guy uh, working. So three button activated Starship sounds, light up warp, warp nacelles and impulse engines, uh, include Starfleet display base. Uh, look at the top right here. We can see um, you know a little bit more of that uh, that background there, we can see a picture of the toy. Same thing on the side, same thing on the bottom, same thing on the side. And then when we go to the back, we can see a product shot of the ship along with its display stands. It's showing us a couple of the features, how it's gonna work, the lights, the sounds, that kind of stuff. Some cross cells showing us some of the other toys that were available at the time. And we got some nice, cool reading right there. The Borg are back, resistance is futile. If you wanna pause and read that, go ahead and do so. I won't bore you with it. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and open this up. I had thought about maybe opening this up and opening this up on camera so we can like do an unboxing together and all of that, but this has me worried. So I want to open it in case I have to do any cleanup or possibly have to get into the ship or anything like that. I'm going to skip all of that and uh, we're just going to take it out of the sh uh, out of the box, put it together and check it out. And here we have the Enterprise E out of the box, put together, stickered up, looking awesome, and I absolutely love this toy. Now, yes, I know that it is not 100% accurate to what we saw in the movie. There was another model that came out later that is a little more accurate, but you know what? Honestly, I love the design of the Enterprise E. I've been wanting to have one in my collection for quite some time. She's my first, and I absolutely love her. So the ship is a very, very good size here. Let's take a quick measurement from front to back. We're looking at approximately 18 inches. And then when she's mounted here on the display stand, you'll notice that she's kind of angled down a little bit or angled to one side and then facing up. So at the highest point, we're looking at approximately somewhere between nine and a half and 10 inches in height. So do take that into consideration when planning your display. Now. The Enterprise comes with a couple of things. Of course, we get the stand right here. The stand comes in two pieces. 
So you get the neck piece right here. So it's gonna clip onto the Delta right there. And there you go, you got two little nubs right there to plug into place right down there on the battery cover. Then the cells come separate. You just pop those right on. We do get a sheet of stickers. We get a sheet of instructions and we get an extra battery cover. This is actually pretty cool. I kind of like what they did here. So, as you see, we've got the Enterprise mounted on the display right there. And this is how she displays on my shelf along with my other ships. But if you wanted to, you could pop this off and you can see where the display piece actually just pops right in there. For me, this works. If I want to take her out and just kind of just kind of fly her around like this, <laughs> this doesn't bother me. This is just fine with me. However, if it does bother you, she did come with another battery cover that is solid, as you can see right there. So if you wanted to display her in any other maybe hanger from the ship or something like that, you could take out this battery cover, put this one on, and then it would be nice and solid. It would look something like that. The only thing you're going to want to consider here is the stickers. So these two labels right here, you only get one set of them. So you're going to have to choose which one you want them on. Um, kind of hindsight, I think it probably would have been better for them to be here on this one. Uh, so, because honestly, when she's on the display right here, I don't know how much, well, you know what? I'm actually glad they're on there because that way when she's, cause she, this is how I display her. So if you look at the bottom, then they're marked right there. So that's fine for me. But again, you know, you just make your choice depending on what's best for you. Now this uses three, I think it was uh double A's. Let's see, uh, triple A. So it uses three triple A batteries right there. And you just pop off that little cover, three AAA batteries, and you are ready to go. So let's take a look at her closely so you can see all of the details right there. You got some of the, the sticker details here. I love the color and I, I really do like the way that they um, that they painted it. I really like the grays contrasting with it, kind of like those dark tans, sort of. And then you got like almost, kind of like almost a yellow, like a very light yellow here for for these panels here. I really like the way that this all looks right there. Coming to the back right here to the next section. Of course, we all know now that is meant to be the shuttle bay, but for the purposes of this particular toy, that's gonna be our impulse engine. <laughs> I know. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, nacelles right there. So you got your booster art collectors right there, uh, completely um, exposed right there, <laughs> done in that clear red. And then we got some silver detail with some blue on the top right there. Very, very nice. Some more of that sticker detail right there. You got our designation right there. Now, one thing that um, this, if, if anything bugged me, this is probably what bugged me the most out of the whole thing is that because of the way this particular toy is designed and uh, the, the, the way that this is designed, there wasn't really a good way to put this stripe down here where it should be. Like this stripe should start here and then go back, but actually it should be like kind of up here where these little yellow panels are at. This is where the arrowhead should be. It's like right here and then going back. Because those panels are there, I you can't put that there. You can maybe put it here, I don't know. Um, if you went here, that might look okay, but then you gotta you gotta handle this, this curvature right here. Plus you're gonna be, half of your sticker is gonna be on your battery cover, half of your sticker is gonna be on the, actual fuselage so that's going to cause problems when it's time to change batteries so um i kind of played around with the placement and this is kind of like the straightest uh way it's also where the instructions tell you to put it oddly enough this is where the instructions tell you to put the sticker and oddly enough that's where it uh, kind of looked the best or the straightest uh so i kind of just went with that um honestly it's a minor nitpick but out of anything, honestly, if I was going to have any complaints, that's really kind of it, is that I couldn't put the sticker up here where it should be. <laughs> I mean, minor, minor, minor complaint. So let's take a look at our electronics here and uh, what we've got going. So we got three buttons. The one on the top is going to be our decloaking sound. So we'll go ahead and whenever we press that button, we're going to get our... Impulse engines are going to light up, or uh, the uh, Bussard collectors are going to light up. Uh, it's a shame that the deflector dish does not light up. Also, why? Why is that red <laughs> when it should be blue? But you know what? I love it. I, I really do. So anyway, first button up here, this is going to be our decloaking sound. The speaker is going to be right here, right behind the bridge. And as you can see, it lights up really, really nicely. Our uh, second button right here 
is going to be our impulse engines. And I really like the way that sounds, and I like how the lights just kind of flicker, just kind of pulsate when that's going. I really like that one. And then the third one down here, you guys are going to love this one. This is your warning signal with the phaser uh, blast. <laughs> yeah, that's everyone's. That's going to be everyone's favorite right there. Absolutely. <laughs> I love it. That's great. So let me go ahead and put this back on. Uh, my favorite is definitely the uh, engines. Absolutely love the way that sounds. So let's see if we can get away with this. We're going to have to back up some. I want to do some comparisons. So here is our... Enterprise E from, I think this was from 1995, 1996, I think she came out with the current modern NCC 1701 from Playmates. So you can see the two of them together, see how, kind of how they size together right there. And of course, we know that that scaling is all kinds of off. <laughs> this ship should be way smaller than that ship. So let's uh, let's set this one off to the side here. And let's bring in again. Once again, this is also the current NCC 1701D from Playmates. And uh, yeah, actually, those look pretty good in scale. As uh, we know, the E wasn't quite as big as the D. It was longer, but it was generally smaller because it didn't have room for like families and it wasn't the cruise ship that the D was, right? So <laughs> the D, I think that's the best description I've ever heard about the Enterprise D is that it was like a cruise ship and I, I, I kind of agree with that. So I do like the way these two scale. I think they look good together. So here we have one last look at the 1996, yes, I went back and looked at the box, 1996 USS Enterprise NCC 1701E from Star Trek First Contact. I absolutely love this ship. I love that I found it new in the box. I love that I'm the one who opened it. I'm the one that got to put the stickers on it. I'm the one that got to do all of that with it. Absolutely fantastic experience when you get an opportunity to do that, especially with something this old. Yes. The ship is not accurate. They came out with a more accurate version later on, but she's my first Enterprise E. I love the design of the E, and I'm really happy to have her in my collection. Maybe later down the road, I can get the uh, the, the newer or, or fixed version. Maybe we can get some custom stickers and make her another ship, something like that. I don't know, because I really do like the design of this ship. I love it. I, I, I love the exposed um, Bussard collectors. I love that it's got a different placement for the engine rather than the shuttle base. You know what? If we get the corrected one later down the road, maybe some custom stickers to make her another ship. Hey, one more ship to add to the fleet is never a bad thing to have. But as it is for now, she is my Enterprise E and I love her. What did you think of this toy? Let me know down in the comments. Give me some thumbs up, subscribe, share with your friends if you like what you see as always. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you next time. Action to arcade, see the best display. Fun never ends with our toy loving friend. First, the one we know, bringing every show. Yeah.